Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Today I want to talk to you guys about some new Final Fantasy VII Remake screenshots that came out earlier this afternoon. Today is November 25th, 2019, just before Thanksgiving here in the United States. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about these because we got some awesome, awesome new info uh, that we can glean out of these screenshots. So there are 23. Uh, there were some additional ones on Twitter, but I didn't feel like they added a ton uh, to the discussion, so I just decided I'm not going to show them. Um, they did remake uh, two key arts as well, so there's, uh, I guess they sh I should say this, there are three photos, uh, one of Reno, one of Rude, and one of Choco Mog on Twitter that are just sort of like alternate angles of their, uh, I guess, key art, if you want to call it that. And then they redid two promotional pieces of art, uh, Barrett and Marlene in the church, as well as uh, Aerith looking out at uh, from the Junin airstrip. Um I find it interesting that they chose to do the Junin airstrip one because we're not going to Junin in this game. So I, that seems like they should have held that for the next game, but we'll see. We shall see. Uh, but let's get right into it. So we have these screenshots. Um, the first one is Aerith fighting apps in the Sector 5 sewers, or underneath Wall Market, I should say, before you get to Sector 7. Um, we saw this fight uh, in the last few trailers around E3 time. Uh, so there's not a ton new here. Um, we do see that she's targeting the horns, though, and, and I do believe that they showed that in, in the previous gameplay video. Um, so I'll just move on from this. Uh, Apps looks a little bit hairier on his legs. Kind of interesting. I didn't notice that the first time because he was moving around so much. But ultimately, it doesn't seem like a ton has changed here. Uh, so up next, we have Cloud fighting some Shinra grunts. This looks like a reactor, or at least um, the intro to a reactor. We see that uh, it, a couple of these screenshots came with descriptions in the PlayStation blog, so I'll just sort of reiterate those. Um, Cloud has two combat modes. There's Operator Mode and Punisher Mode. Operator Mode is fairly balanced around uh, movement speed and just um, attacks that don't do a ton of damage. But then he also has Punisher Mode, which uh, slows his movement speed, but allows him to do heavier hits. So by pressing Triangle here, uh, we're able to activate Punisher mode, uh, but right now he's in Operator mode, which is just standard. And of course he has Attack in the Commands menu, ATB gauge, still only showing two here. Um, I feel like they may expand this at some point. It seems like a system that may expand over time to like three or four slots. And of course he has his uh, MP and, and Limit gauge. All right. So here we have Cloud and Barrett fighting the Sweeper enemy uh, in one of the uh, reactor areas. Um, he is now, he's in uh, operator mode again here. He has an activated Punisher mode, but he is staggering um, the, the sweeper enemy. And he's doing that using the focused thrust ability. This is an ATB ability um, that does, if I remember correctly from when I played it at PAX West, focused thrust is an ability that does um, a lot of uh, stagger damage instead of just raw uh, HP damage. This will help you build the stagger meter on an enemy. Uh, so now that the enemy's staggered, uh, some enemies just sort of collapse, don't do anything. Others just sort of like move slower. I can't remember what the sweeper does uh, when it's staggered, but needless to say, it's going to take a lot more damage. Um, so again, nothing too new here. We'll move on. Um, Cloud again in operator mode. This is probably uh, the invasion of the Sector 5 reactor because now we have Tifa in the party, although neither her or Barrett are featured. Seems like Cloud has an ability here that is some sort of arc slash that can hit multiple enemies, which is pretty cool. I did not have that uh, in the demo that I played at PAX West. So this is pretty neat. Um, these these photos were uploaded to a Flickr account uh, by Sony. And I wanna say that the detail on these looks really, really good. And uh, it's something I'm uh, like, <laughs> I'm like kinda happy about. Um, a, a lot of times, um, you know, you'll, you'll take a screenshot from a game and it doesn't really translate that well. Um, but it, it just looks, incredible here and and this could be although i'm thinking like this, this isn't in tactical mode because it hasn't like grayed out and it doesn't look like um you know he's accessing any menus this could be photo mode if there is a photo mode in the game that isn't confirmed yet uh but still pretty interesting all right so cloud is now in uh punisher mode so what this means is that Cloud sacrifices movement speed for uh, slower attacks that deal additional damage. Uh, so we can see that he's doing some sort of uppercut 
uh, to the shin or grunt here. Um, I mentioned this in the previous video that I did where I talked about playing it at PAX West. Um, it seems like he he's taking the Shinra Grunt off, its, off his feet, but he's not doing a launcher, I don't think. There are certain enemies in the game um, that look like flying enemies, but are not classified as flying enemies. And basically what this enables uh, Square to do is... It gives these enemies a special kind of animation when being attacked. And there are these little... I can't remember the name of them right now, but... Uh, they're some of the first enemies you encounter in the game. There are these little, um... Like, bird-looking enemies. They're some of the, like, the funkier enemies in Final Fantasy, but... Uh, they sort of just bob up and down. And... In the old game, that sort of made sense. Like, you may have enemies that just sort of float in midair, and that looks okay in 1997. Um, and, you know, for games at that time, they may not be a flying enemy, but they don't have legs. Um, those sorts of enemies, Cloud does get a launcher on them while attacking them. Um, so that's when it sort of starts getting into the more like... I've seen it compared to Kingdom Hearts. I've never really played Kingdom Hearts past the first one, so I can't really compare it to that. Um, but it seems a bit more uh, dramatic and cinematic getting a launcher off of those enemies. Um, but only enemies that can't fly but sort of bob up and down. It seems like it works on them. Long story short, Shinner Grunt is not an enemy that does that, so I don't think this is a launcher. It's a long-winded way of saying that. All right, so moving on. Uh, we have Cloud back in operator mode uh, fighting what I... I'm not sure if he's fighting this machine here. This machine has a lot of guns on it. I'm sure he might be. Um... But I don't know what attack this is. Um, this might be uh, a limit break. It, it could be. It seems sort of far along. Um, let me let me see something really quick. Cloud limit breaks. I kind of forget the names of his limit breaks. Uh, we have uh, Blade Beam. Okay, so this might be Blade Beam. Uh, if it is a limit break, I think this might be Blade Beam. Although it seems like there's three or four tracks. Of, uh, of, of beams here, so maybe they changed it a bit. I'm sure they could have. Um, this could be Blade Beam, or this could just be um, an ATB uh, ability, as evidenced by his lack of ATB gauge down here. So, maybe. You know, we'll see. Um, unclear what this enemy is, though. If you know what enemy this is, if I'm just not remembering, I haven't played the game in a few years, let me know in the comments. Alright, so, this is our first look at... Um, using materia in a way so this is the assess materia uh, it was known as scan in the original game uh, most final fantasies have this sort of materia um, so barrett has i think barrett has, has used this or somebody has used this ability and he is assessing or scanning the enemy so we get a, a full-on description of the enemy it's remaining hp and it's max hp uh, this is grass strike these are enemies in the original game. There are these little, like, um, manted bug enemies that appear in the earlier sections. Uh, large bugs that like the dark, confined spaces, uh, usually encountered in tunnels and the plate interior. That's interesting. I didn't. I haven't, like, read a lot of these screenshots yet. So the plate interior, that's interesting. That's a new location. Um, plate interior. I wonder if that's referring to, like, the subway tunnels, um... Or maybe there's like, you know, if, if the plate is like 40 feet wide, maybe there's like areas that we go into there. Maybe. Uh, usually encountered in tunnels in the plate interior. They spew sticky threads from their mouth parts that ensnare their prey. Okay. Ice attacks rapidly fill their stagger gauge. They protect themselves with barrier when low on health or isolated. So uh, this yellow text here is obviously like the big takeaway. And then we see on this panel over here, its resistances, um, we have our weaknesses, our status ailments, so we see here it's it's, res it's weak to ice attacks. Uh, lesser resistances, maybe uh, maybe a weakness does, um, oh sorry, I'm, I'm reading it wrong. So lesser resistances, maybe this means that like it takes 25% less damage from these sorts of attacks. Greater resistances, maybe it's 75% and then immune is 0% or 100% uh, resistant. Absorbed, of course, will heal it. So, uh, moving back over to the left, we see the rewards that it will give. It'll give us 58 experience, 3 AP, and 34 gil. I feel like these numbers are a lot more balanced uh, than what we've originally been seeing. Uh, from what I played at PAX, I can't remember if we saw what XP values were being given to us. I feel like we could, um, but I've had a few people 
uh, in conversation tell me that they feel like the health numbers are really big, uh, especially compared to being so early on in the game. And I sort of agree with that, but at the same time, like, um, you know, Barrett is shooting this, um, you know, okay, so for example, like, this enemy has 1,600 max health. That's really high for an early game enemy. Um, especially in this this game that is going to be stretched out to multiple parts, it's still a lot of health for something that you encounter so early on. Um, but I think the reason for that is because enemies are no longer attacking one for one. Like they're no longer like doing one attack, backing up, you attack them once, so on and so forth, like the traditional turn base. Instead, it's very active. And Barrett is going to shoot this thing 10 times in one auto attack, dealing probably 200 damage. So like the numbers are a little bit inflated, but I think it balances itself out. Uh, but these uh, XP, AP, and Guild numbers seem a lot more in line with something early on in the game. But we see what items it drops, drops a spider web and a high potion, and we can also see what's stealable. So we know that stealing is in. Great. Uh, battle log over here. We can see the number of these that we have defeated. I'm sure there's a trophy for something or um, a side quest of, you know, kill 10 of these things or something. We can see how many times it has been assessed. So I'm assuming this information does not become recallable uh, and you have to assess it every time to relearn this stuff, which I think is good. Um, maybe outside of combat, it'll go into some sort of log, maybe. Uh, and then of course, we can see how many of these we've staggered, which indicates to me that, um, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll have quests to do certain things. Um, L1 for icon key, not entirely sure what that means. And R1 for toggle data, not entirely sure what that means. Maybe that means it'll turn off this panel, but leave this one. Maybe, or vice versa, maybe. Uh, yeah, so this looks like a, an interior during the infiltration um, of the Sector 5 reactor. That, that's what this looks like to me. Okay, moving on. Great, so now we have the uh, Choco Mog Materia. And... It seems like we're using this in an exterior location, uh, somewhere outside. I'm happy to see that this appears to be some Japanese writing. I always really liked how uh, this game didn't translate all of the art. Uh, it left a lot of Japanese in, which I thought was pretty cool. It reminded me of Blade Runner in a way. Um, this is very clearly an exterior. We can see the sky. It's at night. Um, this excites me because we didn't go outside... Uh, we didn't see the sky a lot in, in the original game, at least not until uh, we got to Shinra. Uh, you know, you're always under the plate, um, and I guess with the exception of like Aerith's house, which we will cover in a little bit, um, you don't really ever see the sky. So I'm happy to, to see the sky in a way for that, um, but more on what's actually happening in the scene. Uh, so Chocomog is out, Chocobo and Moogle. They're at the summon that's out. Seems like we're fighting a sweeper. Uh, we have seen in previous gameplay videos, as well as been told in this blog entry, that um, the summons, once you summon them, they fight alongside you automatically. Um, and then once you, uh, w once the, the gauge here runs out, they do like their their final attack. So um, Chocomog, let me see, Chocomog Materia. So Chocomog had um, an attack. It had two attacks, actually. It had um, Death Blow, which is non-elemental, and then it also had uh, Fat Chocobo. So it seems like Death Blow is the attack used here, which is Stampede. Very similar. Um, I believe this is officially called Stampede, but this reminds me a lot of Death Blow. So maybe Fat Chocobo will show up one more time. That'd be pretty cool. But again, we can see that we're, we're outside. Um, a lot of people have commented that the Moogle looks different. I'm not big on cross Final Fantasy lore or designs. I do know that they've changed several times. Uh, seems like it still has the bat wings, body of a koala, um, or head of a koala, I don't know. I've, I've seen comparisons run all around. Um, but yeah, so I do know that in the original game, this was a, a non-elemental attack, or sometimes considered a wind attack, I think. Um, but this seems to be an electric attack, which is interesting, unless that's just visual. Who knows? Uh, okay, so I think we can move on from here. The Chocobos look great. I just think they look so, so good. Um, probably can't ride one to the next game, though. All right, so now we're getting into the mini game uh, that, we're sh that was showed off. It's just one mini game this time, and it's darts. So Cloud, I'm guessing this is in seventh heaven. 
Uh, he's playing some darts. His gloves look awesome. This looks like real leather. Uh, he's got his sweater on. Exposed brick looks like a Brooklyn bar. Um, <laughs> not a lot going on in this screenshot, but he's playing darts. And then this is the dartboard. This looks a little rough, if I'm being honest. Um, like the numbers look very edgy and rough. Like it just looks like uh, anti-aliasing is not turned on or something. Just looks a little weird. Um, what is interesting though, and I saw somebody commenting about this on Reset Era, uh, that this looks like a VR game, which I think is interesting because um, they turned the fishing mini game in Final Fantasy 15 into a VR game. So maybe we'll get some sort of VR component in this. Who knows? That could be, you know, uh, it could just be speculation. Or it is just speculation. It could be completely false, I should say. Uh, but yeah, we see darts. Uh, clearly, good scorekeeping. You know, there's real scorekeeping in this, which is nice. Um, all right, we're moving on. So now we have just some uh, character art, or some character screens, I should say. Uh, so we have uh, Biggs here. He's, he's got his, his, I don't want to say 9 million, but he's got a handgun. Extra clip here. Uh, Looks great. They haven't really touched him too much uh, over the past couple of years, um, but yeah, I think he looks great. We have Wedge here. Wedge has been redesigned a couple times. Um, seems like he has an automatic shotgun, or maybe these are like mini grenades or something. Um, what's interesting is that he has an ammo drum, but an ammo belt as well. Um, that That's kind of interesting. I'm not a gun expert or anything, but I don't really know how you load one of these manually, uh, or if maybe he's just like gonna load one in the chamber each time if, if he has to get down to that. But overall, he looks pretty good. Uh, his weapon looks good. I mean, he's got arm hair. That that's a that's a detail you don't always see. Um, but yeah, I think it looks good. I think it looks pretty good. This this gun actually has a has a has a prone mount. That's pretty cool. It must be pretty powerful, and a handle on top. Should he be one handing this thing? I feel like that's that's kind of crazy. Good trigger discipline here, though. His finger's not on the trigger. And of course, Jesse. So this is in Seventh Heaven. Uh, what's interesting is that they decided to show darts, and that makes you wonder if pinball is going to be part of this game. Um, I kind of doubt it, only because, spoiler alert, Sector 7 gets blown up. Um, so it would render these games kind of useless. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Jesse's looking good. All right, and of course we have Reno. Um, just, yeah, I mean, it looks really, really good. He's got his cattle prod. Um, he's got his goggles for some reason. I never really understood the goggles. Um, I feel like that was added in Avon Children. I don't really remember him having those in the original uh, FF7 original Reno. Let's Google that real quick. Uh, he had sunglasses. Okay, they've turned his sunglasses into goggles. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they were always supposed to be goggles, but they look like sunglasses. But yeah, Reno's looking pretty good. Uh, not voiced by Quentin Flynn this time, which is weird. Uh, but we also have Rude. So this is, I'm guessing, the Sector 5 church. Uh, we saw in the previous trailer that, uh, like, we sort of know what that looks like. Got a few glimpses of that. Rude looking like Pitbull. Looks great. I, I'm digging the all black. He looks really, really good. All right, so here we have a motorcycle chase. Uh, this is brand new, obviously. I think this might be when the new soldier comes in who was shown in the, uh, I think, Tokyo Game Show trailer this year. Um, so we have uh, Cloud and Jesse on one motorcycle, uh, Biggs and Wedge on the other. And it seems like this is, uh, okay, so we have L1 for long range. It looks to be grayed out, maybe? Um, then we have triangle for spinning slash. So maybe squares just auto attack like it was in the originals. Uh, motorcycle mini game, uh, and then triangle some sort of strong attack. Um, but yeah, this is clearly brand new. We only ever did the motorcycle once outside of the golden sauce mini game, so this looks really good. Um, I think Motonox, Motonox Gust. This might be the health of the motorcycle. Um, I actually originally thought this said Motonox Guest, but it's Motonox Gust. So that's probably the model of the motorcycle, and it probably has a health bar of its own. I wonder if you could actually switch between these guys, and if you can control uh, Biggs to, to shoot the other guy. We'll see. Of course, we have the Sector 5 church looking great, as always, because you see the flowers blooming in the church, which is the song we're listening to right now. Uh, and then stained glass windows. We have some God rays. Looks really, 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 really good. 
Now we have the interior of what we can only assume is Aerith's house. It has that uh, semi-spiral staircase, so like a two-sided staircase, um, or two-directional staircase, I should say. Door to the basement, we got pots and pans. This place looks lived in. It looks wonderful. Mom's drinking tea at the table. Maybe she could watch a little bit of TV, some propaganda. Tons of flowers. Looks really, really good. Um, this just looks like artwork. That doesn't look like a photo of anybody. It just looks like artwork. Uh, we do have some photos here. And yeah, there's a lot of flowers. Looks very cozy. It looks very, very good. I like it. And of course, when we first hear this track, I think, uh, is, is this screen when we get to Aerith's house. So we can see the sky. That's crazy. We have the waterfall. We have what looks to be uh, some Mako reactor components all over. We have this little Mako reactor here for the house uh, that's in the original game. It looks a little bit different. Aerith now has a balcony in her room. That's really cool. I think it's so sick. And of course, the river. Um, I always wondered if this was fresh water or if this is Mako. Unclear. Um, it looks green, but water can be green too, so who knows. Um, but yeah, it looks like we come in here, come down these stairs uh, from Sector 5 and into the house. So this just looks great. I will say, it looks a little bit more junked up than the original, but I think that could be probably more realistic. Um, it always seemed very, very odd that Aerith just had this like house in the middle of a slum, uh, or on, on the outskirts of a slum, that could see the sky, didn't have the plate overhead, had a waterfall, and looked gorgeous. So I think junking it up a little is the right call here. I dig it. Uh, all right. So moving on. Menus. So this is where we're going to end this video. We're going to talk about some menu screenshots. So we've gone over this before. Um, this is the uh, game difficulty or the battle difficulty. Uh, settings. So we have classic mode, which is, um, sorry. All right, so we have uh, classic mode, allows it, uh, makes it so the game uh, has AI controlling your characters, and then you just select ATB abilities. So they auto attack on their own, they'll probably defend on their own, um, but all you have to do is uh, select abilities as the ATB gauges fill up. Um, it does say that the battle difficulty is the same as easy, which I would like to learn more about. Um, not really sure what that means. It could be, so before we get too deep into that, normal is basically the new battle system. That's where you use auto attacks, and then you also weave in uh, tactical mode, where you select abilities. So you're auto attacking and then semi-pausing and then selecting abilities. Um, that seems to be like you know, on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, I'm completely making this up. That seems to be at about a 7. And then easy would probably be about a 3, where things aren't going to do a ton of damage. You don't have to react as quickly. Um, but if you're using classic mode, then it's always going to be at that uh, 3 difficulty. Uh, but just giving you the added bonus of just being able to select abilities. So I wonder if they're going to expand this a little bit. I've seen some people saying that kind of sucks. Um, I'm just going to play a normal. I don't really plan on playing a classic myself, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, not a lot here. We have difficulty, cursor position out of battle, in battle, uh, minimap, static. I'm assuming that means if it's going to rotate as you move. Um, I really hate it when minimaps do that. Uh, subtitles, chat log, and then combat controls, guide display. Okay, so I think combat controls, guide display is like, in, in some of the earlier demos we saw like a... Uh, a listing of, of commands in the top right corner, like left stick to move, right stick to move camera, circle to jump, or, you know, circle to interact or something like that. So I think you can turn those off, which is great. Uh, also in the background here, I think this is like the city streets. You know, this looks like a stone street with a couple pathways. Um, uh, just trying to see. Yeah, these are billboards. So, you know, it doesn't seem like it's uh, inside Shinra proper or anything. It just seems like a street. These look like ATMs over here, I'm guessing. We'll see, this is definitely clad though. All right, so this is where things get very interesting. Um, so I'm gonna restart the music here only because I had five minutes left on that 30 minute track, which is crazy. So we have the Buster Sword. We could see the Iron Blade, Hard Edge, Nail Bat. I don't remember Iron Blade at all. I think that might be new. 
Hard Edge was the second sword that Cloud gets, and then the Nail Bat was actually given to you in the Temple of the Ancients in the original game. So, interesting that they're giving it to you this early. I'm hoping that it's really in the game and it's not just, like, for demo purposes. So, fans of Final Fantasy IX, myself included, will be very, very happy to know that uh, each weapon has uh, abilities associated with them. So the Buster Sword has Focused Thrust uh, associated with it. What that means, and I'm, I'm basing this off of knowledge of Final Fantasy IX, I'm not saying this is 100% the way it's going to work in this game, um, but the article did allude to this and sort of damn right say it, but again, nothing's confirmed until we actually play the game. Um, so basically this means that when you quit the Buster Sword, you get an extra ability called Focus Thrust. And then it's either the more you use it or the more you use the sword, your uh, gauge of proficiency increases. And when you reach 100% proficiency with Focus Thrust, you then gain that ability permanently. So uh, what this means is that you can then equip a different sword or a different weapon that has better base stats, but if you really like this ability, you can use this ability with another sword or weapon while learning that weapon's abilities. So by the late game, you can basically do whatever you want with any weapon you want. It's a really, really cool system. Um, it was used in 9. Uh, the Esper system in 6 was very, very similar as well. I really dig these sorts of systems, mostly because I'm a completionist, but also because it provides you a lot of player agency, which I think is great. Um, it also makes it so, like, weapons don't become obsolete so fast, uh, because especially in 7, like, anytime you visit a new, a new town, same thing in 6, really, and basically any Final Fantasy game prior to, I'd say, 8, um, or 8 and prior, anytime you visited a new town, you immediately went to the weapon shop, bought a new weapon, and just sold your old one. Right? There was no point in having it anymore. So, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm assuming, if it's anything like 9, it's just the more you use it, like the more you use the weapon, uh, the, the more points you get towards proficiency. I'm assuming. So, uh, also on this screen... Excuse me. Uh, we have a description, we have a model, and then we can see the materia here as well. Now, in the article, I'm going to read this to you verbatim. It said something pretty interesting. It said that... Oh god, now why can't I find it? Okay, so it says each weapon has its own unique weapon abilities that increase in proficiency the more they are used. When an ability's proficiency... Level reaches the maximum, that ability... To, okay, never mind, I was wrong. <laughs> I read... Okay, so we're going to get to the next screen, and this is this is the thing I wanted to talk about. So this is the uh, upgrade screen. And as you can see here, when we're on the Buster Sword, we can press triangle to go to the weapon upgrade settings. So, on this screen, the blog post tells us, here we see Cloud's Buster Sword upgrade screen. The different options allow you to improve the wielder status or increase the number of materia slots available. That's really interesting. Improve the wielder status or increase the number of materia slots available. So, this screenshot looks cool at first. Unfortunately, I don't think it tells us anything. So, we see the Buster Sword Core, which is described as growth materia encased within a Buster Sword. Use Cloud skill points to unlock skills and enhance the weapon's capabilities. We see the skill list as attack power plus 5, magic attack power plus 5, max HP plus 100, and strong attack damage and punisher mode gets a 5% boost. So, I can't tell you what any of this is. We have 4 of 4, 1 of 4, 4 of 6 up here. I don't know what any of that means. I'm assuming it's these other spheres here. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we see that we have different cores available. So I'm guessing that we have, on this core here... We have learned all, all four skills, which are these four. On maybe this one over here, we've learned one of four. And then on this one, we've learned four of six. I don't know. I really don't know. This, this screen like looks cool. It just doesn't really tell us a lot. What we can see, however, is that there are now three materia slots here, which is interesting. Uh, in the past, you were never able to add materia slots to weapons. Whatever they had, they had. Um, but I do want to go back a couple of screens to one of the combat screens because I want to show you something. And it has a lot to do, or it has everything to do with adding more materia slots to weapons. So, yeah, right here we can see 
that we have these two materials left. We have one, two, and then I believe these two are linked. I'll, I'll zoom in again right here. So it seems like we have two linked and then one here. So originally the Buster Sword just had two material slots that were linked. So I think it was these two and then it seems like we are adding this one. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the way it goes. I look terrible and completely blown out right now, which is hilarious. So we'll go back to this. All right, so unclear if, if that's the way it works. This reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy XIII's uh, Crystarium system. I can't really remember. Wasn't a huge 13 fan, uh, but I did like the upgrade system. I, I thought it was just cool moving through it. I thought the gating was bad, but I think overall it was a good idea. So I think this is a pretty cool implementation of that, especially when you mix it in with the weapon abilities from 9. Um, but yeah, that's it. That That's all 23 screenshots. Again, you can check out the other ones that they put on the Final Fantasy VII Twitter. Uh, it's Reno and Rude, Chocomog, and then two remade key arts uh, for for the game as well. But that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Love to get the discussion going with you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, you know, happy to answer anything, uh, any theories that maybe you could start and maybe I can answer some things on, give my own opinions. Um, if you're looking for more coverage for Final Fantasy VII Remake, please subscribe to the channel. Um, today I hit 5,000 subscribers, so thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed to me over the past year. Uh, we have grown five times this year. I went, I was at 1,000 January 1st, November 25th, I'm at 5,000. So, great year uh, so far. Really excited to push all this into 2020. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. You can find me at SJCage on Twitter and Sweet Johnny Cage on Twitch. And that's it. All right, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.